Welcome back to the No Books Garage. Willie with you. It's been a while since our last video, so let's jump into it and get you up to speed on the trailer. Finally get around to the process of priming and actually getting paint onto the trailer. We're using Rust-Oleum's Rusty Metal Primer. We chose that because I feel like it will give us quite a bit more protection considering the environment that a trailer usually operates in staying outside subject to scratches and sun fading so the rusty metal primer would give us a lot more protection I feel because of the amount of solids within it plus they used to use this years ago as um, just just a hot rod primer and nothing else you know when you were doing things on the cheap at any rate, it takes about 20 ounces to cover the 18-foot deck, and we're putting on the first full coat, as you can see right here, using just the uh, the Harbor Freight gun and the compressor. Now, what I discovered about this particular product, because it is so heavy with solids, I had to up the air pressure. Usually, you only need about 20, 30 psi with an HVLP gun, but these solids were quite heavy and required a little bit more air pressure, so I cranked the pressure up on the compressor as well as opened up um, the uh, gun in order to give me sufficient pressure to spray the product. And once again, about 20 ounces, except for those two areas that you see me pointing at, covered the entire deck surfaces, the side rails that had already been done with this product. Now the mixing ratio is generally supposed to be four to three. I found one to one was absolutely better. Your particular application might be a little bit different. We talked about compressors. There's my $75 Craigslist find before and after. A little bit of work, a little bit of Alice Chalmers paint. Once again, I'm not using anything fancy. Just a 15 gallon compressor system built back in 1974 just showing you folks that you can do things on a budget when you have to the other amazing thing is I actually got something off of Craigslist and it wasn't a scam hey get lucky every now and then Rust-Oleum's smoke metal gray was chosen by my wife Deborah thank you Deborah as the color for the trailer and here we are mixing it now if you want to see an excellent absolutely excellent video on spraying rust-oleum metal not metal rust-oleum paint go to United States of build there are lots of other folks out there but he gives an absolutely excellent tutorial take it from a sometime teacher on how to use this product here we're mixing it four to three to one and also using the Japan dryer because of the time of the year that this color was sprayed onto the trailer the temperature outside was typical Nashville weather in other words if you don't like it stick around 15 minutes it will change and it did I went from days where I was out there in the shop actually sweating to days when it actually snowed big temperature swings and moisture and humidity and this paint seems to be susceptible to it so using the hardener and using the Japan dryer as a catalyst for this paint to speed up the drying process became paramount for the time of the year that I did it. On top of that, I had to heat up the garage as well as the trailer itself, the metal in the trailer itself, just for the sake of, of drying properties of the particular paint. And of course, using the mineral spirits that you can also use acetone in uh, this paint process with rust-oleum paint if you choose and again depending on the conditions so your conditions will dictate what you do once again I use mineral spirits to spray the initial color coat onto the trailer now I didn't show you the process where you took said where I took the sandpaper and sanded the trailer yeah I did it so you know it's like watching grass grow okay so I just didn't do that so we just went straight to the process of putting the paint onto the trailer get your gun dialed in once again United States of Build has a fantastic 
tutorial, I couldn't think there for a second, on how to do that process, but get your gun dialed in before you spray your paint. Observations on using the Rust-Oleum product. It is very easy to spray, very forgiving, but you have to be aware of your ratio that you're using. Four, I found four to three to one to actually be a bit on the thin side or maybe it was my technique but I had spots on the trailer couldn't think for a second again um, early Heimer said in who knows no but I had spots on the trailer where the paint was a little on the thin side and a little bit runny now remember your first coat is really just a flash coat just enough to get some color on there you're not trying to even it out but one of the things that I enjoyed about spraying this particular product was how it did lay and smooth out even out level out on its own given sufficient amount of time so your first coat is just a color coat here's a word of caution for you allow this stuff to tack properly once again temperature and humidity are going to play a big factor in how quickly this stuff will tack up in my case in a couple of spots I went too soon or sprayed too soon again or went back over it because I did not get what I thought was a sufficient amount of color in a particular spot. In other words, I got in a hurry. Take your time. The stuff works beautifully. If you allow it to do what it does naturally and everything. So, once again, nothing fancy, just the Harbor Freight gun, running it through the filter, checking the consistency at this mixture again, once again was four to three to one. I made it I made it work and made it do. You can do the same thing. So Here's some cautions for you. If you are doing this in an enclosed, attached garage, well, all garages are enclosed for that matter, but in an attached garage, be aware that the uh, VOCs and this stuff are quite strong. You might be, depending on where the inlets for your particular HVAC system is, your inlet may be in your garage and you'll be sucking these fumes into the house and then your house will smell like rust-oleum paint. I don't think uh, other people in the house will like that. I quite enjoyed the odor of the paint myself. But, once again, be aware of your surroundings. So if you are doing this in an enclosed area, you have to provide yourself adequate ventilation. Also, be aware of the time of the year that you're doing it. You can probably do this outdoors. But you have to be aware that one of the things I discovered is gnats and mayflies are attracted to Rust-Oleum paint. I actually came out in the garage a uh, few hours later after putting this color coat on it and picked more than a few of them off. Fortunately, they had not attached themselves so deeply that they uh, left an impression in the paint for me to sand out later. I just pulled them off and disposed of them. In fact, a couple of them actually flew away after I pulled them off the paint. So once again, just be aware of it. I don't know what it is. They're just attracted to it. So, PPE. Be aware of your ventilation. Be aware of your temperature. Be aware of your mixture ratios and just experiment with it. You don't need a lot of expensive equipment to do this. It's an extremely forgiving product that gives you really, really good results, as you can see right here. In my next video, I'm going to show you the final product and some of the mistakes that I made in the process in trying to get this done in a hurry. But that's what she looks like with the Rust-Oleum Smoke Gray paint. Very simple process. Very easy process that practically anybody can do with a minimum amount of equipment 
at a minimal investment. I'll give you guys a breakdown later of what it cost me. Yes, it did cost me some money. So stick around, come back, like, subscribe, get notifications, tell your friends. This is Willie with the No Box Garage saying I'm trying to get everything out of life that I can because I'm running on borrowed time. You guys stay safe out there.